when things didn't go well last year for South Carolina, Spencer Rattler caught a lot of the blame. And a lot of that, 1 million percent, was warranted. But at the exact same time, though, I think there is more context that needs to be addressed if you're going to blame Spencer Rattler. So if you want to blame him, that's your own choice. But I think we need to make sure we have all the information before we do that. Last year, Spencer Rattler, 18 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. 13 of those came November in the bowl game. Like, dude was unconscious. He beat two top 10 teams. Everyone's buying the number seven jersey. Like, it was a good time to beat Spencer Rattler in November. However, leading into that point in time, there was a little bit more to be desired. More interceptions than you want. South Carolina's kind of trying to find their mojo. Like, outside of November in the bowl game, you talk about Spencer Rattler this offseason very differently. And when you're the quarterback of a Division I football team, much less in the SEC, at a school like South Carolina, like you are going to get all of the praise when things go well. You are going to get all of the criticism and then some when things don't go well. So I get that. That's fair. It comes with the job. But when you look at South Carolina last year, going into media days a season ago, Shane Beamer took the mic. And one of the things that I remember most clearly that he said was, we are not going to ask Spencer Rattler to be Superman. And hearing that, I was like, great. Sounds like a great idea. I think in principle, that was 100% true. But then you look at what they had around him last year, and they did not support him well at all, offensively at least. Like, if, if you're the quarterback, you got to have something else around you to complement what you're doing to kind of keep defenses off balance. They could not run the football at all last year, 114 yards a game. I'm not saying this to dunk on South Carolina. I'm saying this to maybe provide some more context for what Spencer Rattler did last season. So when you have trouble running the football and they were dinged up in the running back room, I'm not saying it's all on South Carolina. There were some circumstances they just straight up couldn't control. But when you can't run the football, then a defense is able to just key on the pass game. And when a defense can just key on the pass game, how much more difficult is that for your quarterback? And Spencer Rattler made his own errors for sure. There were some decision-making errors in there that you are extremely disappointed with if you're a South Carolina fan. I get that. But I'm telling you, having no run game for him consistently last year did not make his job any easier. Also, they did not do a great job protecting him. I mean, he was sacked 7% of the time last year. He was sacked 31 times. You look across the board, and South Carolina is in the lower third of the country in terms of what they did protecting Spencer Rattler. Now, some of that, too. There's some blame to give from Spencer Rattler. You got to get rid of the football, right? We can't run around back there too much. At some point, you got to throw it away. Like, I get that, too. It's all part of it. But if you're not going to protect your quarterback consistently and not run the football and help him out in the pass game well then I also have a difficult time pointing the finger at Spencer Rattler and saying Spencer it's all your fault like you can't give him subpar tools to work with and then be upset when the job gets done in a certain way and I say all this to say for Spencer Rattler tons of ability we saw that the last couple of games of the year. We've seen what he has under the hood. And I'm not saying if you check these boxes for him, he wins the Heisman Trophy, but I am saying you at least give yourself a better chance. Now, again, there's more thoughts on this. Before we move on, though, here's a quick word from Game Time. The Hard Count is brought to you by the good people over at Game Time. And I just want to put you in the situation right now. Let's say it's rivalry weekend. It's Ohio State-Michigan. Last game of the college football regular season. You don't have tickets? Come on, man. We can't, we can't do that. We can't let that be the way that we finish the regular season or finish the college football season in general. So game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the big time matchups. And we're about to get this college football started with elite deals with last minute tickets and best price guarantee. So don't stress over getting to the game like Ohio State, Michigan. Don't stress to getting tickets to the Iron Bowl with the best prices you're set at game time. So game time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets on all of the sporting events, entertainment events. You want to go to a concert, they got you covered. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. Game time will credit you 100 110% of the difference, okay? So taking care of you there. Here's what we're going to do. Snag tickets without stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account. Here's the here's the here's the tricky part. Use code hardcount. All right? So use the code hardcount, tell them we sent you. You'll get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code hardcount for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. 
Another thing that probably hurt Spencer Rattler when it came to him having success on the field, or at least was an uphill battle for him on the field, the defense last year for South Carolina allowed 30 points a game. Shane Beamer is not okay with that. Nobody in Columbia is okay with that. You made some effort and you made some moves to really have yourself a better unit defensively this coming season. So that's out there. But last year, when you struggled defensively, that puts a lot of pressure on your offense. It puts a lot of pressure on your quarterback. Because when the defense is allowing as many points as they are, that changes the way that you call the offense. It changes the way that you're able to call the offense because you're thinking, okay, we got to one, probably score the majority of these drives, if not every drive, which is always your goal. But it's one thing from wanting to do that versus having to do that. And then also, you're probably calling it a little bit more and and you're thinking as a quarterback, like, hey, I I really got to press here. I got to make sure that, that we get explosive plays consistently. Like you're trying to hit the home run when maybe it's just a better idea to hit the single. And so I just think for Spencer Rattler, so much criticism is is given to him. And at times it's very, very fair. But before we all throw stones at Spencer Rattler at his first multiple interception game, if he has one this year, let's make sure that we check, okay, was he put in position to succeed? Were there pieces around him holding up their end of the bargain in the run game on the offensive line and giving him the best possible chance to play his game? Because again, we have seen what he's capable of. There's a reason why he was the preseason Heisman Trophy winner in the preseason number one pick a couple of years ago at Oklahoma. There's a reason why he was so highly touted as a recruit. There's a reason why Shane Beamer said, I want you to be my quarterback. Went in the portal and got him. Like, we know he has the ability. And so I just get a little bit frustrated. And I, I think it's just a little bit incomplete when we say such negative things about Spencer Rattler when he doesn't have the support around him. So I'm not saying it's 100% one way or the other. I'm just saying Spencer Rattler ability-wise, can throw the football consistently really, really well. Like, dude has got all the ability in the world, in my humble opinion. Putting him in position to then succeed is on him. And the decision-making part of it, you for sure got to talk about with him. Like, it's obviously something that South Carolina fans early in the year maybe weren't thrilled with, and that's fair. So just, just get it to a point where he can be the, the factor in his success. Get it to a point where Spencer Rattler decides, okay, I have to do my job for me to be successful, for South Carolina to be successful. I'm not saying you have to rush for 200 yards a game. I'm not saying that we have to just give single-digit sacks up this coming season. I'm saying if we can just put it to a point where we're even and then Spencer Rattler can take over from there, that's where I think we can adequately have a good sample size for what he's going to be going forward. So I'm not here dunking on South Carolina. I'm not here telling you Spencer Rattler's winning the Heisman Trophy. I'm saying context is everything, and it's no different in this case. So South Carolina fans, appreciate you watching. Make sure you're subscribed. Talking college football every single day. We are now into the season, and we will do three live shows a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You can find the hard count right here on this very platform, 11 a.m. Eastern. Get in the live chat. We'll have a good time, hear from y'all, and just talk ball. College football and only college football all year round. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We're going to keep this party rolling. We will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.